in gynecological history and obstetrical history you have to be aware about few things you have to be careful about the privacy and confidentiality of the patient you should avoid using of medical language and you should find symptoms and relevance to patient's life the history taking and examination should be systemic and thorough and if there is any positive finding this specific area should be explored in case of gynecological history taking first thing you have to ask about is the demographics and then is the presenting complaint the presenting complaint should be in layman terms and the duration should also be mentioned in the detail of the presenting complaint there are specific questions in every type of presenting complaint for example in case of abnormal uterine bleeding you have to ask about the length of time of problem amount of blood loss relationship of bleeding to sex and to menstrual cycle or to the last menstrual bleeding in case of post menopausal bleeding you have to ask about the menstrual history except in post menopausal women in menstrual history you ask about the usual duration of each period which is about 5 to 7 days a length of full cycle which actually is measured from the day one of one bleed to the day one of the next bleed which means it includes all the days of menstruation plus all the day in which there was no bleeding so a whole cycle constitutes from 21 to 35 days on an average it is about 28 days you have to ask about the first day of last menstrual period the pattern of bleeding which could be regular or irregular and the length of cycle you have to ask about the amount of blood loss normally it is from 10 to 35 ml on an average an average size tampon can take up up to 5 ml of blood so you can ask about the number of tampons used by the woman during her menstruation fourth thing is the cervical screening all patient should have cervical screening you have to ask about the date of last smear its outcome and any previous abnormalities colposcopy or treatments fifth thing is the sexual and contraceptive history in sexual history you ask about the present partners and sexual orientations of the person and in contraceptive history you ask about the contraceptive method used either she is using or not using and if she is using which method is she using and if there is any need of contraceptive method sixth thing is the other gynecological symptoms are there any gynecological symptoms which could be related to the presenting complaint number 7 is the previous gynecological history in this you are going to ask about any previous gynecological problem it could be related to medication or any surgery then is the previous obstetric history in this history you are going to ask about the gravidity versus the parity the gravidity is the total number of pregnancies a woman has had in her life so far and the parity is the number of live births at any gestation or still births after 24 weeks of gestation for example a woman has given birth to twins she will have gravidity 1 and para 2 let's take a case in which a woman has had six miscarriages had a child birth at 32 weeks of gestation and is now pregnant so the gravidity will be 8 and parity will be 1 you also have to ask about the number of children with ages and birth weights mode of delivery it could either be spontaneous vaginal birth or c section was there any complication during the birth the number of miscarriages and gestation at which they occur and any terminations of pregnancy with record of gestational age and any complication eighth thing is the previous medical history you have to ask about any serious illness or operation with dates in this manner you can ask about the medical and the surgical history which was significant then you have to ask about the medications and allergies allergies including to what 
and the reactions was there any current or previous medication tried you have to ask about the family history is there any significant autoimmune disease or any brac related cancer and thrombophilias last thing is the systemic inquiry in systemic inquiry you have to ask about appetite weight loss weight gain bowel function bowel function could be related to any urogynecological problem you have to ask about it in detail also about the bladder function it could be related to any urogynecological problem it should be explored in detail next thing is the examination in the examination of gynecology first thing is the general physical examination under the heading of general physical examination few important things are the inspection and examination of the hands there could be anemia detected in the examination of hands after the general physical examination is the abdominal examination in abdominal examination the patient should have an empty bladder should be comfortable and semi recumbent in position the exposure should be from cephas sternum to symphysis pubis the proper consent should be taken and it is very much advised that there should be a chaperone along with her during the examination in inspection you should look at the contour distension mass surgical scar dilated veins stria gravidarum laparoscopy scars fen and steel scars which can take place during c section or hysterectomy head raise or cuff to look at hernias or divarication then is the palpation you ask you have to ask if there is any pain in the abdomen and if she feels pain when it is touched if there is pain at any side this side should be examined last you should start with the right hand from the right side of the patient first you should palpate the lower left lower quadrant then left upper quadrant then right upper quadrant and right lower quadrant if there is any abdominal mass you can palpate below the mass if the mass has any pelvic attachment you cannot palpate below that mass then is the percussion in percussion you have to go through resonance if the mass is gaseous in nature you would hear the resonance then is the fluid thrill and shifting dullness fourth thing is auscultation it is very important in case of acute abdomen bowel obstruction and post operative ileus third and most important thing is the pelvic exam in pelvic exam verbal consent should be taken from the patient it is very advisable to have a female chaperone present non sterile gloves should be used with proper lightening first step is inspection in inspection you have to look at the external genitalia and the surrounding skin the position in which the inspection is done is the patient should be in a dorsal position with hips flexed and abducted and knees flexed the exposure should be from the cephas sternum to the pubic symphysis you should ask the patient to cuff to look for skin discoloration lumps scar scar could be of any previous episiotomy deficient perineum prolapse urogynecology and pelvic floor problems or female genital mutilation then is the speculum exam the choice of speculum depends upon the patient's presenting problem there are two types of speculums which can be used first is the cuscos speculum and second is the sims speculum cuscos speculum is used in case of taking of any sample or procedure and sims speculum is used in examination of any prolapse third thing is the biomanual examination biomanual examination is very important for pelvic organs this technique requires a lot of practice in this examination we can palpate the cervix uterus tubes ovaries and uterosacral ligament the steps of the biomanual examination includes that first with the left hand you have to part the labia and expose the vestibule you have to insert one or two fingers of the right hand into the vagina 
third thing is that you should palpate and check for irregularity, hardness or tenderness. Left hand should be placed above the pubic symphysis and press down into the pelvis to palpate the fundus of the uterus. In this way, you can palpate the cervix and the uterus between your two hands. The normal uterus is 9 cm long, pear shaped, antiverted in position, freely mobile and non-tender. Tubes and ovaries Then with the right hand fingers placed in each lateral fornix to palpate at nexa, tubes and ovaries. The right hand fingers then are moved backward and upward and left hand is pushing down in the corresponding area. Normally tubes and ovaries cannot be palpated but any swelling and tenderness requires attention. Then at the last you can palpate the uterosacral ligament by placing your fingers of the right hand more in backward direction. You can palpate the posterior fornix. If there is any tenderness and scars it should be given attention to. Scars are very important in case of endometriosis. Last thing is the rectal exam. In rectal exam, additional consent should be taken. It is done especially to examine the uterosacral ligament thoroughly. In this exam, enteroseal can be differentiated from a rectoseal and rectovaginal examination could also take place in its place. If there is any lesion in rectovaginal septum, it is much appreciated in the rectovaginal examination. So hope you like this video, kindly subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you.